Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Madhani agosho. Mese singara yankai. Opa growth. Aha, it was not Jesus. It was not keep tired. Eh, hey, it was not keep tired. Eh. Hey. So hizo zote ni sinza kusema Bwana asifiwe. Na tukienda binguni eh, lugha sijui itakuwa ni gani. So tuta, eh, ya binguni tutaelewa sote. Bwana asifiwe sana. We thank God for his mercies and grace. Others I'm born again this morning and I love the Lord for being my savior and my Lord. Na ikiwa kuna mtu mgeni jina ni George Kahuangati and I love the Lord. A present help in time of need. We are continuing with our theme. We're expanding our theme for the year that you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and all your strength and your neighbor as yourself. And this month we're looking at the topic of loving God in all situations. Last week we looked at the issue of patience and perseverance. Today we want to look at the topic trusting God in tough times. Can we say trusting God in tough times? And um, why trust God in tough times? Because times will always get tough, but the Lord is there to support his people. So what's the definition of, of trust? I was trying to look at the secular definition of trust. It's showing or tending to have a belief in a person honesty or sincerity. Um, synonyms of that is trustful, unsuspicious, unquestioning, unsuspecting, uh, innocent, childlike faith, and so on. I also tried to see what does the Bible say concerning the trust. According to the Bible, trust is confidence. Can we say confidence? Or a reliance or resting of the mind on the integrity of another person, and for us, God. Can we say God? Proverbs 29, 25 says, he that puts his trust in the Lord shall be safe. Can we say shall be safe? That if you put your trust in the Lord, you shall be safe. Another verse is uh, Psalms, uh, 71 that says, O Lord God, you are my trust uh, from my youth. Now, in our uh, first uh, reading, that common passage that uh, we have read and had read to us many, many a time, is the testimony of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And to give a little background, King Nebuchadnezzar erected a golden image in the plains of Dura, and he gathered his officials together for the dedication of that image. All the people gathered were commanded to bow down before it at the sound of the trumpet. Why did King Nebuchadnezzar build this monument? It's because that in a previous, previous years, there was a dream that he had dreamt. And Daniel had interpreted this dream to him. And in that dream, he had seen an image that had a head of gold, and that represented Nebuchadnezzar. Can we say Nebuchadnezzar? <laughs> an, an image, a head of gold, a chest and arms of silver, thighs of bronze, legs of iron, and, and, feet, and the feet a mixture of clay and iron. That is in the book of Daniel, chapter 2, verse 31 to 35. And in that dream, King Nebuchadnezzar had seen that this image was sm smote by a stone that was, or a rock that was cut without hands. And it was uh, uh, smitten into dust or into smith smitharines and blown to the four ends of the world. And when King Nebuchadnezzar is building this image, He's saying, no, I'm not just a head of gold. I am totally of gold, and I will, my kingdom will not just be for a short time. It will last forever. So he wants to go against what God has already said. 
that yes, you are the head of gold, but there's coming another kingdom, a kingdom of bronze, a kingdom of silver, and other kingdoms. He's trying to say that, no, my kingdom shall last forever. That's why he erects this image. When the trumpets are blown and the musical instruments played, people would bow down to the image. But in their midst are found some Jewish men who refuse to bow down to the golden image, namely Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They are quickly, can we say quickly? They are quickly accused before the king that there are some people in your kingdom who don't obey your commandments. And you have promoted them in, the, in your kingdom to be officers. Remember that they had earlier been promoted together with Daniel into positions of authority by the king at the request of Daniel after he interpreted the first king's dream in Daniel chapter 1 verse 49. So the king is told that this, this your decree has been defied by these your officers. And in a rage, he asked that the three men be brought before him. And these are his words. Nebuchadnezzar spoke to them. Is it true, Dan Shadrach, uh, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods nor worship the golden image that I have set up? Now, if you're ready, at the time you hear the sound of the horn, the flute, the harp, the lyre, and the psaltery in symphony with all kinds of music, and you fall down and worship the image which I have made, Good. But if you do not worship, you shall be cast immediately into the, the midst of a burning fiery furnace. And who is the God who will deliver you out of my hands? So the three young men are faced with the toughest test of their lives. This is a far cry from their keeping away from food, probably offered to idols, from the king's table that they had refused years earlier in Daniel chapter 1 verse 11 to 18. This is a test. Can we say a test? This is a test of their faith. From their Jewish background, back in Judah, it was an abomination to bow down before an idol. They are faced with a choice, either to die or to compromise their faith. A very ch great challenge indeed. And remember, we are talking about trusting God in difficult times or tough times. What was the response of these three young men? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. If that is the case, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. And he will deliver us from your hands. O king. But if not, let it be known to you, O king, that we do not serve your gods, nor will we worship the golden image which you have set up. Of course, this is an insult to the king, as it were. He is very angry. For me, I see these young men as being unwilling to compromise their faith. Can we say unwilling? They were unwilling to compromise their faith. They were unwilling to backslide in their faith. They had proffered faith in the Lord or confessed faith in God and had lived for him and they were not ready to change. I want to say in view of the life of these young people and uh, what they encountered, I'm saying that trust in God involves an element of risk. Can we say risk? or sacrifice. In expression of their faith and trust in God, the young men were willing to lay their lives on the line, but not compromise their faith. In this day and age, you who is hearing me, how many are ready to say no? To bowing down to the image that Satan, through his agents, erects to derail our faith. There are many images, images of corruption, images of immorality, and many, many others that the enemy erects in our lives and circumstances 
wanting us to compromise. Wanting us to say ni afadhali. Badala ya kurushwa katika kwenye tanuri ya moto, I better compromise. How many are ready to say no? As we whisper to neighbor, are you ready to say no? Hey, are you ready to say no to the, to the images that Satan has erected in our lives, in our situations, in your circumstances? I want to say that these young men, they were actually thrown in the fiery furnace. After the young men tell the king to his face that hakuna haja ya kukujibu katika hijambo. You don't even need to have the instruments play again. We will not bow. The king in anger, can you say anger? He commands that the furnace be heated seven times more than usual. And that the three be thrown into the furnace. And his order is executed. And the men, they are thrown in. So what I'm noting is this. That the three men are actually thrown into the fire. God allows them to be thrown into it. In the course of trusting in the Lord, you will face negative circumstances. These ones were bound and thrown. Hello? You may actually lose your job. You may be taken to court on trumped up charges. I want to say don't lose your faith in the Lord. Some of you probably are actually facing negative consequences in your life because of your faith stand. And some of you are saying, is it worth it? You are about to compromise. On the journey to the furnace, the young men could have changed their mind and said, hey, tulifikiria kwamba mungu atatuokoa before we get to the far. It seems he's unable. We better compromise. Whisper to neighbor, they did not change. They didn't change. En route to the furnace, that was probably that, that I thought God would rescue me before I go to prison, before I'm thrown into the fire. The stand of this young man was that God is able to rescue us from the furnace. But even if he does not, know clearly we shall not bow to your image. I want to put it to us who are listening this morning that these are the kind of people God is looking for who will challenge negative authority to its face your threat to sack, to sack me, to frame me, imprison me notwithstanding, I will not do what is wrong. I will not do what is wrong. God is able to rescue me from your hands. And even if he does not, I will not what? Compromise. I will not compromise. I am ready to suffer the consequences. Even if God does not rescue me. I am ready to suffer the consequences. These men, I want to note that they are rescued from the fiery furnace or rescued from the fiery furnace. To the casual observer, the throwing of these young men into the fire marked the end of their lives. Probably in the eyes of a casual person, who knew of their faith, who knew of their stand, na ameona kwamba wametupwa katika tanuri ya moto. These are failure. God has failed them. Mambo yao imeisha. But God comes in the midst of the fire. Hallelujah. Somebody should say amen. God comes in the midst of the fire. By sending an angel. Others have interpreted that this who had the form like the son of man is probably our Lord Jesus Christ and the appearance of the fourth man startles the king and he says hey we threw didn't we throw three men into this furnace but I'm seeing four men walking into the fire, in the fire unharmed and the likeness of the fourth is like that of a son of God we don't know whether it was Christ, but an, definitely an angel. The Lord came and rescued them. 
the, the challenge to you and I is to hold on to your faith. Up to the end. Whisper to your neighbor, up to the end. Those who see you sacked or humiliated, thrown into the police car, taken to court, may see that as your end. But they don't know of the God who appears in the midst of the fire. Praise be to Jesus. Can we whisper to your neighbor, he comes in the midst of the fire. Yes, he comes. Notice, he does not come before the fire or after the fire. He comes when we are in the fire. Tell your neighbor, then you must be ready to go into the fire. <laughs> He does not come before the fire <laughs> or after the fire. He comes when you are in the fire. He, when the decree has been said, who you nimefuta kazi, who you nimefanya hivi na kile kilingine. Yesterday I was talking to a certain man who was framed in his place of work. I'll not mention the, the, the names or the particular place. He was framed that he had misused his authority and taken advantage of his juniors. And he told me that he came to this church many years ago, maybe nearly 20 years ago, and he cried to the Lord. And the Lord rescued him. He spoke to your neighbor, he was in the fire. The Lord rescued him out of the fire. He was... To be, to be charged. In fact, the, the, the charges had already been prepared against him. Aliambio, enda ujisalimisha kwa yule officer ambaya na invest fraud. And this man was said that uh, he's not in our midst today. Um, he was telling me that he came when the, the case was hottest. He came into this church and he prayed. And the Lord heard him. Praise be to Jesus. So God did not come before the fire or after the fire. Whisper to neighbor, he came in the midst of the fire. <laughs> yes, and he rescued him. So I don't know what is your fire. Hold firm. Don't compromise. Do not compromise. In our second reading, I'm noting that is Paul's analysis of hope and suffering. You may say to me, Pastor, those boys that we read about in the Old Testament were rescued instantly. Yes, the fire, they were thrown into the fire like in the hapo kwa hapo. But for me, Pastor, I have been in the fire for many years. Hello? <laughs> Tell your neighbor, hold on. I'm about to give up. What's God's word for me? What's God's word for me? I'm in the fire. Fire of compromise. Fire of immorality. Whatever kind of fire you are in. Maybe like that man being framed. You're about to lose your, your, your job position. You're a business person. You've been compromised. Kuhongana ili. Kazi yako ama biyasharako yende vizuri. What is Paul saying? He's saying that the sufferings of this present time are not comparable to the glory to be revealed. Hallelujah. That though as Christians we suffer, suffering is there. Which part of is there? The glory that God has kept in place for the sons of God is far greater or far surpasses the sufferings or is not comparable to the sufferings that we are going through. Yes, God came in the midst of the fire. But he's saying, look beyond the fire. Praise be to Jesus. Look beyond the problems you are facing to what the Lord is going to do for you in future. I'm also noting that what Paul says, that subjection in futility is counterbalanced by hope. Can we say hope? Paul, in this passage, is looking ahead to the resurrection and the return of Christ, which shall be the end game. That is the manifestation of the sons of God. What does this mean? 
that from the time of Adam's sin, God allowed the whole creation to be subjected to the law of decay. Can we say decay? Corruption, pollution, degradation of the, the, the environment. I was looking in a certain, uh, in, the, in, the, um, in the newspaper and I saw that some species have already become extinct. Others in Kenya are about to be extinct, such as the white rhino, isn't it? On the brink of extinction, whisper to your neighbor, decay. This creation is decaying. From the time God created it in perfection, it is decaying. The Lord has allowed it to happen since the entrance of sin through Adam. But, can we say but? He has also placed a hope in the creation that the creation will be set free from the bondage of corruption. When? When the sons of God are manifested at the return of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. When our Lord Jesus Christ returns, you and I will be translated. This corruption, this body that is subject to decay, shall put on incorruption at the return of Christ. So Paul is saying that the whole creation is groaning, is mourning, is groaning, waiting, in hope that that law will be annulled. Somebody say amen. The time is coming. Is coming when this law of decay, of corruption, will be annulled. And that is when our Lord Jesus Christ comes. And this will be the signal to the creation for, for renewal, for its renewal. In my opinion, or in my understanding, when you read in the book of Isaiah, chapter 11, verse 1 to 6, it says that there's, there's, there shall come a time when the lion shall eat with the lamb. Today the lion and the lamb cannot be together. How's yo? Ndama na simba logwaru hayuwezi kwa pamo pamoja. Lakini wakati wona kuja. When? After the return of Christ, the Bible says there shall be a millennium, the thousand years. In my view, that is when the creation will begin to be healed. Hallelujah. So we have been subjected in futility or vanity. But there is hope. Whisper to your neighbor, there is hope. There is hope that these our bodies that decay, that are subject to disease, that the, that law will be, will be cancelled. The time for its annulment is around the corner. But Paul says this. Hope that is unseen is true hope. Can we say true hope? Hope that is unseen. So Paul encourages our faith by telling us that true hope is the one that is unseen. That is yet to be realized. Why? Because he says, who hopes for what he sees? Do I need to pray for money? If you already have money to buy food, then you just go and buy the food, isn't it? You can't say, I am hoping for money to buy food. What you don't have is what you hope for. If it's because we have not seen Jesus Christ, we eagerly wait for the time when we shall see him face to face at his coming at the end of the age. Praise be to Jesus. Can we say that is true hope? In the same way, we also hope for God's intervention in our present day sufferings, irrespective of their magnitude and duration. Praise be to Jesus. No matter how long you have been in the fire, no matter how huge or, or fearsome the fire is, God is able to come through for us. Hallelujah. Even as we have that eschatological hope, whereby we shall be set free from this bondage of sin, of corruption, of decay that causes things to go haywire. Even the seasons have changed, isn't it? We are experiencing floods. 
The rains came before you planted. Eh? Those who plant, wakulima eh? hawakuweza kupanda in time. Corruption decay. But that law, Paul is telling us this one day it's coming to an end. Praise be to Jesus. The corruption, the decay shall come to an end. Whisper to your neighbor. Remain in hope. Remain in trust that the Lord will come through for you. As Paul nears to conclude that passage, he talks about the Holy Spirit. Can we say the Holy Spirit? Our helper. Paul informs the believer that in the process of the journey of hope in suffering, we have a helper. Tukona msaidizi. His name is the Holy Spirit who helps us in our weaknesses. When you are weak, he comes through for you. Praise be to Jesus. I want to say that without the Holy Spirit, no Christian would make it. No Christian would survive the fires and the images that Satan has raised in this world. Mwambia jirani yako, unahitaji msaada. Wa msaidizi. Na jina laki ni roho mtakati, mtakatifu. You need his help. You need to cultivate his help. You need to welcome his help. We are told that he intercedes for you with groanings that cannot be uttered. So that you can be able to, to overcome the problems that you are going through. That you may be able to shida hadi kukombolewa kwako kufike. That you may be able to, to persevere and be patient until your salvation comes. Praise be to Jesus. Whisper to your neighbor, welcome the Holy Spirit. In your life to help you. In your, in your life to be your present help in time of need. To be your ezer. To be your helper. In the time of tribulation. In the time of trouble. We have him. He's there to help us. And that's why Jesus Christ says, said to his disciples that if I do not go away, then the comforter will not come. And it is better for you that I go away. Because when I go away, the Father will send the, the Holy Spirit or the comforter in my name. And he shall lead you into all truth. And we can see that when the Holy Spirit came on the day of Pentecost, the disciples who were weak, the disciples who had denied Christ, they became bold. Praise be to Jesus. They were able to say no to the heralds of the day, to the Pharisees of the day. They, they withstood them to their face and says, God judge between us whether it is better for us to obey you or to obey who? God. Praise be to Jesus. They stood firm. They were able to go through the fires of, of their time. And they overcame. Praise be to Jesus. Some of them, they laid down their lives, but did not compromise. Praise be to Jesus. The Holy Spirit also witnesses to your spirit and my spirit that we are sons of God and that our redemption draws near. Our redemption draws nigh. And that is why, again, in the book of, still in the same book of Romans, where in uh, verse 35, Romans 8, 35, he says, who shall separate us from the love of God, of Christ, shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake, we are killed all the day long. For you are counted as sheep for the slaughter. No. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through Christ who loved us. Praise be to Jesus. Whisper to neighbor, that's God's report concerning you. That, that's God's report concerning you and I. That we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. We are more than conquerors towards what? The fires of temptation. Fires of hell. The gates of hell. Milango ya kuzimu, hata inuliwe na mnagani. 
Biblia inasema kwamba we are more than what? Conquerors. Ask anybody, do you believe it? You had better believe it. That's God's report concerning you. So God's report is not is not that we are weak, we are weaklings. God's report is not that the enemy has an upper hand. God's report is that we are more than conquerors through Christ who loved us. And that's why Paul is saying that he is persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present nor things to come, nor height nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Praise be to Jesus. He is persuaded. Nothing. Can somebody say nothing? Whatever fires I am facing, whatever fires you are facing, they do not have the power. Praise be to Jesus. The power belongs to who? To our God who is in us. The Bible says Christ in you, the hope of glory. Glory. Or Christ in us, the hope of glory. Because he is in us, we have hope. Because he is in us, we have the victory. So as you go through your, or face your fires, the Lord is there. He is there for you. Lakini ni wewe ukae kidete, bwana sana. Be the Shadrach of today, the Meshach today, of today and the Abednego saying that my God is able to save me. Praise be to Jesus. And even if he does not, I'm not bowing. Praise be to Jesus. See Nami. Anaweza kuniokoa, lakini hata asipo niokoa sifanye nini? See Nami. Ninaye msaidisi. Ninaye huyo aliyeshinda. Na jina lake ni Yesu. Jina lake ni huyo mfalme wa falme, Mungu wa miungu. He is able. I don't want to say so much. But I want to say that trust God in tough times. Whisper to neighbor, trust God. Yes, trust God. Let your faith not be shaken because problems have come and problems shall come. And the Bible says again, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him from them all. Many, not few. Whisper to neighbor, many. Are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him from them all. That is Psalms 34, 19. So your afflictions that you may have gone through are many. And others that are coming. Ambia jirani yako. Badu zinakuja. Because we cannot preach a gospel and say that there are no problems that are going to come. That will be a lie. Problems will come. Tribulations will come. But we have the Lord with us. Praise be to Jesus. The one who comes in the fire in the midst of the fire. Not before the fire or after the fire. He comes when you are in the fire. And Christ said in the book of Revelations, he who endures up to the end, that is the one who shall be saved.